Palette to Palette with Robert St. John and Wyatt Waters is made possible by a generous contribution from the Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations and from viewers like you. Thank you. I got a chance to become Captain America. Easy Rider, man. He did, he had the Easy Rider uh, motorcycle helmet. Yes, and so I, I got to wear that throughout the, throughout the store and it was kind of like, you know, a 12 year old wish of mine come true. It just took you 50 years. I was Peter Fonda for a moment. So dude, we headed into the Delta, did a deep dive into Greenwood, hooked up with our friend Martha Foose, cooked some blueberries with her, had a great lunch at Crystal Grill. Yep. Went in search of a pawn shop monkey. And we went to Cornfell's, met Murray Cornfell, and we saw the world's largest underwear in a pretty good sized bra. Only in Greenwood. You know, I think when people who don't live in Mississippi think of Mississippi, what yeah. they have in their head is the Delta. Sure. And what defines the Delta to me is not the landscape, but it's the people. Yeah. And there's a little bit of quirkiness. Oh yeah. And, and ex eccentricity, but in a beautiful way. People drive, you have, if you live in the Delta, you gotta have a good tank of gas. Yeah, you really do. But there, the Delta is full of storytellers. It's full of uh, true Mississippi characters. And that's why we love the Delta. You can see why they sang the blues there. Yeah. We're in the heart of the Mississippi Delta, Greenwood, Mississippi, with our best Delta buddy, Martha Foose. Say hey, Martha. Hey. All right, we're gonna have fun. We are going to look at this cool farmer's market that they put together. We're gonna learn the story behind that. All right, we're gonna head east. We're gonna go, hopefully, visit the pawn shop monkey of Greenwood, Mississippi, the world's largest set of panties. Yes. And have a killer lunch Giant at the Crystal Grill. Giant underpants. Yeah. Oh, so they're men's pants. He has, he doesn't, I mean, he's got them all. He's okay. got everything. Okay, they're unisex. <laughs> Pinch, you owe me a coat. All right, come on. Let's do it. You know, so Mississippi is an agrarian society, and nowhere do you get more agrarian than you do in the Mississippi Delta where the soil is perfect. But, you know, Greenwood has this really cool farmer's market. That's great, it's in the downtown area. It's built on the former railroad tracks there, and it, it really, it's, it's a social event. It was designed by a great architecture firm here in town, uh, Beard Riser, mm -hmm. and they really take into account sort of the feel of the Delta, so it's sort of based on the structure that you'd see a cotton gin. When you get there, you kind of get the feeling that you're in, in the Delta. You, you definitely know you're in the Delta because of the architecture. That's a great point. It's very unique, and I would say probably at least structurally, the most unique farmer's market in the, in the entire state. It's brand new this year, and the community's really proud of it. it the farmer's market's has, not new this year, but the structure's new. The structure new. is. And it has a rainwater ca capturing thing so you, that goes down on the end, mm -hmm. that waters the flower beds and stuff like that. So I it's, love the design It's of this really place. great. When we were there, it was a little late in the season, so uh, a lot of the produce had, had kind of uh, run its course and had gone to seed, but uh, there was some choice. Again, there was food there, but what there really was there, there were good Delta characters in there. All my favorite folks are here. I was gonna say, you gotta take us to your yeah. favorite folks.
I got me some cannas, I got me some tomatoes, I got me some jams. Yeah, I got jam too. And it really has uh, kind of cultivated a little community around it. So, you know, people that you see, you know, every Saturday, you know, mm -hmm. you're gonna run into the same people. And, and it's just it's such a nice mix of folks for the town, so. When I'm at the farmer's market at home, no one wants to get their picture made with me. It's usually, you walk around with Brett, Brett gets his picture made. But, you know, I'm the guy that used to ride the bike around the neighborhood. Oh, we're just so proud to create have Create havoc. Oh, yeah. You know, I think, I think what you're seeing more these days in Mississippi, we've always kind of, we're eat local society. We, we, we really eat local because we didn't know any other way and that's the way it had to happen. So. Before the rest of the country were eating local, Mississippians were eating local. But there's been this renaissance and resurgence of that, and I think a, a, an appreciation of locally grown produce and foods uh, that's really great to see. In the Delta, it's either falling down or on fire. So right. it's nice to see you know this revitalization happening in our little yeah. town. So. Martha worked on the movie, The Help. Oh, you wow. baked pies, didn't no, you? No, I did not. You didn't, I make, you didn't make that pie. You did not make that pie. <laughs> yeah, I figured I could go through life without being known as the girl who made the right. pie. Right. <laughs> so, but I did make a. That was a, a wise of, career move. Uh, well, you know, always thinking. Um, I had to make a vegan fried chicken drumstick, and I made a gingerbread house that left on the cutting room floor that I worked my brains out oh. on. So I wish I could have. I know who the vegan was because I catered a big party with all the crew and the cast and the whole thing, and they were eating around, and I don't remember what item I had, but I was talking to her, I'm not gonna mention the name, <laughs> and she was eating it, and somebody had told her, one of my employees had told her it was vegan. <laughs> and then she said, oh, this tastes so good, it's <laughs> vegan, and I went, uh, okay, bad. yeah, <laughs> and it just kind of went away, and it was not vegan. I think she said she was leaving a cruelty-free lifestyle, and I was like, well, the world's a cruel place. <laughs> no flour was harmed yeah. in the making of this. No, no, not at all. Looking forward to lunch. Looking forward to this big underwear. Love the farmer's market. It's giant underpants. Giant underpants, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I really want to see. I'm going to be really let down if I don't get to meet the pawn shop monkey. I've heard Martha Foos talk about this pawn shop monkey forever. And there's there's a pawn shop in Greenwood and there's a monkey in the pawn shop. And as a kid, man, all I, I wanted a monkey and a purple doom buggy. Those are like the two things I wanted. You could buy them in the back of comics when we, we were kids. We talk about, you're right. 1695 or something. You tell people that they don't believe it. Like when we were kids, when Wyatt and I were kids, in the back of an Archie's comic book or whatever, you could buy a monkey for like 15 bucks and they would ship it to you. Guaranteed live <laughs> delivery. I've, I've always regretted I didn't spend uh, some of that 15 bucks instead of spending it on Sour Apple Jolly Ranchers. I, yeah. I, could've, I could've had a monkey. I would've traded my brother. <laughs> Sorry, Jim Joel. So we went in search of a pawn shop monkey because just the words pawn shop monkey, if somebody says there is such thing as a pawn shop monkey, you gotta go look. The pressure's on. I know, sometimes the monkey goes to Cleveland on the weekends, but we will do our best to find. I want the monkey to be here. We got our fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Pawn shop monkey, Greenwood, Mississippi. Sometimes you get the monkey, sometimes the monkey goes to <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> sometimes the monkey gets you. <laughs> We've been talking to Martha about the monkey. She said, well, we gotta go eat here. And we said, well, as long as we can see the pawn shop monkey. So we have been two or three months wanting to meet this pawn shop monkey. And we got to the pawn shop. Man, I hope that monkey's here. No monkey. Oh! No monkey. This no monkey. Used to be. The pawn, pawn shop. shop monkey was in a pawn shop in Cleveland, Mississippi. Yeah. He had another engagement. That monkey gets around. So Popeye is the current monkey. What was the other, the older monkey was Boo Boo? Yes. He was a mean. Yeah. He was a mean monkey? Yeah. Mean. That yes, might be was. the one that pulled Jane Rose's hair. Okay. <laughs> Probably would. She was like, hey little monkey, hey little monkey. And he went, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, nice. But when you're in the Delta and you got nothing left to do, what do you do? You play the blues. It's like you know how they have celebrities opening department stores. They had monkeys promoting pawn shops, you know? Yeah. And an artist and a chef playing a blues in E, 12 bar <laughs> blues in the back of the store. I 
I did break a string, though. I did. Yeah. Sorry. Keith Richards. He plays five strings. And I think one of us was out of tune. I ain't saying who it is. I'm closer than you. B. Free the Delta, you gotta play the blues. <laughs> even if you're out of tune. So, when they tell you you're gonna meet a pawn shop monkey, you just think, well, this yeah. is the level. You know, we're gonna meet a pawn shop monkey. Does it get any better than that? Not within two blocks. Well, within two blocks, we met Murray Kornfeld, and it, it went up, like, to this level. <laughs> uh, a true Delta character. Robert St. John. Robert St. John. Good to meet you, sir. Good morning. Why, why? Uh, Murray. I am a the haberdasher extraordinaire. Yeah. I can see that. Uh, yeah. I can see that. This is this the is only cool. store in the world that you can buy your underwear and a helmet at the same place. Just don't put the wrong one on your head. <laughs> <laughs> He's done that before. This. Oh, that? Wow. I, I, I just got to look for the cup size. I'm sorry. I'm a guy, so. Oh my gosh, it's a K. It's a K, 56 K. Ah! Peter Fonda, man, put it on. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> this is, I wanted to be no, Peter I'll Fonda. Pop, pop. Well, I just said I'm the only Jewish redneck in Greenwood. I ride a motorcycle, I carry a 45, I wear blue jeans. You know, it's, I'm the only one left. One of a kind. One of a kind. When Martha said, I'm gonna take you to see a pawn shop monkey, I got it, man, you gotta see that. But then she said she was gonna take us to a place called Cornfields. There was like a department store. I was like, eh, okay, we're going to see a department store. We had no clue, dude. Man, and that, just like we said, the Delta is full of characters. And, and I think the head of the characters oh. is Murray Kornfeld. 36 years ago, I, I started big and tall. We've been here 96 years. My father says, what is all this coming in? I said, this is our future. He thought I was crazy. He said, we don't have this kind of clientele. I said, well, I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna create the demand for it. 36 years later, we are the biggest big and tall store in Mississippi. Wow. Size-wise, one of the biggest in the country. I have sent clothes to California, to New York, to Canada. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. <laughs> and we all got in that, that underwear. Martha, you and I, we were all in that one. We were in a band, so to speak. Waistband. Martha got inside our underwear. <laughs> <laughs> They're really going to put me in charge of the PTA now. Uh. <laughs> hey, let's get in the window and pretend we're mannequins. <laughs> So for the last 20 years, anytime I've been anywhere near Greenwood, Mississippi, around lunchtime, I'm going to the Crystal Grill. Love that place. And anytime I'm in the Crystal Grill, I'm gonna get that pork cutlet with the gravy. Yeah. Takes up the whole plate. Good stuff. Oh, and the pies was really great. The meringue was just stacked so high. As many times as I've eaten in the Crystal Grill, I've just really been in that front room. I didn't know. It's like a labyrinth, man. That place is huge. It just keeps going back and the back and back. The inner We were in some way back room back there, and it was jamming that day. It was packed. And, and as we know, people will drive an hour in the Delta uh, to eat uh, good food. And if you're at Crystal Grill, they probably drive two hours. They get a lot of regular customers. Best Delta buddy, Martha Foose. We are, we, I did find out that we are double cousins, which is a very Mississippi thing. You know, mm -hmm. when you talk to somebody long enough, you become related, you find out you're related. Yeah. So we're related in by two different uh, strands of connections. Three degrees of separation in Mississippi. Party 
after lunch, you know, we, we, we got a painting done. Got a painting done driving through Thornton, Mississippi. And I just found a silo that I thought was interesting. And it just happened to be near another painting that's in our book of a cypress tree uh, in the water just right next to it. And, and that morning, I was in Greenwood uh, when I was doing that painting, the, the cypress tree. And then I drove back to that same area and the grandfather who was fishing with the uh, grandson told me, said, you know, there was a guy painting in Greenwood also. And I was that same guy. <laughs> anyway, right across the street from that was the, uh, uh, the gin. And that's where Martha, it turns out, her mother was working when she was pregnant with Martha. Ooh. I didn't know that. That At was just, the cotton an, gin. Yes, just another happenstance. <clears throat> you know, that was one of those why moments. You and I have been working together 17 years, <laughs> maybe more. And uh, so many times we've been just driving somewhere, in this case through the Delta, and you just said, oh, that's it, stop. We stop, and pull over, you know, you get out, you kind of frame it and look at it, and then boom, an hour and a half, two hours later, there's this yep. beautiful painting, and that was a prime Wyatt moment right there. And just kind of stop the truck, I'm getting out, this is what I'm painting. Most of the time, you don't know the connection until after you've done the thing. You find it out while you're doing the thing. You say, oh yeah, well that's connected to this other thing. That's also very Mississippi, mm -hmm. all these uh, interrelations between things. I think it's a great representation of the Mississippi Delta. I mean, that's just something you see. And uh, those cotton gins look a little different today than they did you know, mm -hmm. 50, 60 years ago. And, and that was one of the older ones and so, uh, as you have always done, whether it's downtown Jackson or some other part of Mississippi, you always seem to capture those things before we lose them. And that's, a, that's an important thing that you do. Sometimes I think, you know, it's not a good thing that I paint something because the next thing you know, it's gone. But I at least get a chance to preserve it. <laughs> that's funny. Turns out where you were painting though, is this kind of, the railroad tracks right there aren't banked quite right or whatever, and there's a little bit of a turn. A few spills. And, yeah, and if, and if the engineer's not going the correct speed, it falls, I mean it- Bananas it, for everybody. Yeah, and, and it happened in the Delta, this happens, and the train will fall over and people just know to come, and I think they had about 10 or 12 carloads of bananas spill one time by the next morning yeah. all the bananas are gone there's not much cleanup to be done when it spills yeah. there so uh it happened with corn one time and i think all the moonshiners we were told <laughs> came and got the corn and you know, by the next morning it was gone and something about yard furniture yeah too. patio furniture they had uh the guy took the took the curve too sharp and uh all this patio furniture spilt out and then overnight uh patio furniture disappeared <laughs> Cooking with Martha is a blast because she appreciates the heritage of the cuisine that we grew up eating, that our grandmothers prepared. Mm -hmm. But she also is a true professional and, and she can add modern techniques to that. And she, maybe more than anybody I know, can blend both of those together. No and uh, so not um, I figured we would do a little bit of baking because I know that right. you I need you're, all the help I can get, but I'm iffy with your baker. I'm novice. I am, okay. I, am, I am not a baker, period. This is a really great, simple cobbler. I call it Silent Shade Cobbler. It's named after a bridge over um, in Holmes County. Martha's husband was working at a blueberry farm, and it just made perfect sense. Got about five cups of blueberries in here. And then we're going to use some unbleached all-purpose. Then we're going to add in a half a teaspoon of salt. 
some uh, double action baking powder, and so it's going to act one time when it comes in contact with the liquid, which mm -hmm. in this case is going to be milk, and it's going to react another time when it goes in the hot oven. So that's going to make us have a nice poofy biscuity nice. kind of top nice. on top. We're going to use some mace. So then we're going to use a little bit of uh, freshly grated nutmeg. And then also, I like to grind cinnamon mm -hmm. also. It's going to add a little bit of lemon juice. Some lemon zest. Lemon zest. Here we're going to add a cup and a half of granulated sugar. One cup. Whole milk. Whole, good whole milk where it's right. thick at the top. Got to shake it up. About five tablespoons of unsalted butter. This is just going to form kind of a, almost like an icing consistency right. batter. There's so many cobbler philosophies mm -hmm. out there in the world, you know. The biscuit top, the lattice top, the almost slab pie type right. people kind of put into the cobbler. I think anything that's cooked down with fruit in it, I call it a cobbler. Bobby St. Jay, here comes the blueberry cobbler. Ooh, look at that. You need help to get it? Okay. I should have, uh, should have done the polite gentlemanly thing. Look there. This little guy's gonna simmer down for a little while. And another great thing about cookbooks is like if however stressed you are, if you're like freaking out about some business deal or like family drama, if you get in bed with a cookbook, or you start cooking, you're only focused on that. That's if right. you're making a jelly roll, the house could be burning down and you're having the biggest emotional crisis, but it takes your mind and focuses it on something. So it's really, a, you can kind of get into that headspace. Yeah. That's, that's what it's with painting for me. I mean, it's, it's cooking for y'all, but... Uh, it's eating for me. If I'm painting a lot, there's usually something Paint, going on. cook, <laughs> eat. It's like eat, pray, love, but... That's it. But Thank funner. You. Hey, thanks for having us. You're Anytime. Awesome. You are awesome. Yay, I'm gonna hug to you. Yay. Next time, savory. We'll do savory things. Ooh, we will. So we cooked with Martha. We got to sit down in her kitchen, um, eat some blueberries, and that was great, but just the stories. And just sitting there with uh, you and Martha in that kitchen was a blast. This, the whole thing has been an adventure. I mean, every episode, everything we've done has been coming to this book and it's been exciting to have this documented. Yeah, you know, we filmed our pilot for a TV show oh in 2002. Gosh. And uh, it's, it's airing here in 2017. So 15 years later, uh, I, I, had, years I had hair at the time. Uh, yours was a little darker. <laughs> but uh, we, we finally got this TV show thing done and it has been a blast. We've gone all over Mississippi, but we're not finished. Now, you know where we're headed? Italy. Now, we are going to Italy. Show these people what Mississippi is about. That's right. You know, Tuscany is a lot like Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And that's true, because it's an agrarian society, yep. just like Mississippi. Uh, it's very family oriented. It's all about food, art, wine, stories. Yeah, uh, it's good to go over to Italy and uh, share a little Mississippi with them. 
and it's, it's always good to take Mississippians with us to Italy. It's a fun time. We're the import-export business. Hey, I never thought about that. So next season, we're heading across the pond. It's been fun in Mississippi. We're gonna amp it up a little bit. We're gonna have even more fun in Tuscany. See you there, arrivederci. The paintings seen on today's program are featured in the A Mississippi Palette Cookbook. This beautiful volume also includes Mississippi Heritage Recipes, A Mississippi Palette Cookbook. Palette to Palette with Robert St. John and Wyatt Waters is made possible by a generous contribution from the Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations and from viewers like you. Thank you.